For your Hamlet essay assignment, you're going to read the play Hamlet and research some aspect of the play. It could be a character or a certain scene that says something powerful to you, something that stays with you, especially after watching two different film versions of the play. So as you watch those, keep in mind how those whatever theme that you are exploring is depicted differently, either by the way a character is portrayed or by the way a scene is, is enacted, or maybe the order, the sequence of the scenes. Maybe the scenes are done in a different order than what they are done in the written play. So there are lots of ways that a director can emphasize one certain theme that he or she wishes to emphasize in the, in the film version of the play. And so a film is like an interpretation. It's like a form of literary criticism of a work of literature, especially one that has been researched again and again, like Hamlet. So I'll post for you this, this outline that you can use as a template uh, you can leave the Roman numerals as they are, and, and if I'm not requiring you to use an actual outline, you can write this out by hand if it's not a requirement for you to turn in, or uh, you can type it out, or you can just use this as a guide as you're writing your draft. Um, you can look and see what I have written and use it as a loose guide. Again, there are many good ways to organize an essay. You do not have to organize yours the way I have organized mine. Uh, but of course, all essays start with an introduction. And here's a pro tip. I never ever start with the introduction. I always start with the body paragraphs because I have trouble introducing what I'm going to write because what I usually end up writing uh, is not exactly what I might have introduced. Um, so when you start out with a thesis statement, uh, which is traditionally, of course, at the end of your introductory paragraph, you're going to want to leave it a working thesis statement that you revise every time you come back to your draft and do revisions. So keep working on the thesis statement until you do that final revision. So uh, when you get to the point where you are thinking about what you're writing um, in order, and it could be after you have written your second or third draft of the essay, uh, make sure that you have all these elements in your essay. Just a good way of checking that out. Um, of course, you're going to start your introduction with a hook that gets the reader's attention and hints at the theme of your thesis. And give some context. What does the reader need to know about the play, about the theme? Um, if you're talking about parent-child relationships or friendship, whatever theme that you are discussing, uh, you might want to give some context of how that theme relates to Hamlet, how that theme relates to the play, even if you're not writing about the character of Hamlet specifically. And then you're going to end with a thesis statement. Make sure that your thesis makes it clear that you're comparing the significant differences in two different film versions of the play. Uh, then you have your body paragraphs. Um, you're going to start, and this is optional, you can format yours, make it in the order that is logical to you, but one way you could start your body paragraphs is just with a an emphasis on the theme that is impacted by the film's two versions um, of a scene or a character. Uh, do some research. Find a scholarly source, a, an expert in Shakespeare who has written about the play Hamlet or a character or a scene that you can then quote and reference as you are writing about that theme. You're going to use quotations from your secondary source and from the play. Make sure that you 
follow the MLA handout that I will post and I have a guide for that below that we will review quickly. Um, the next paragraph would focus on one of the films. This takes you through a sequence that might be a good order for you to start discussing one of the films. Um, what impact does the way this character is portrayed or the scene, the way it is played, how does it impact the theme? Of course, you're going to continue to need to quote the play itself because the actors are speaking the words of Shakespeare. So although you are going to be referencing actors, you will still be quoting from the play if you uh, use a certain word or phrase said by a character. Uh, this link will take you to a PDF that will help you understand how to do that. Also good to continue to use your secondary source if you can find a good way to incorporate that as well into your description of each of the films. Now, after you've discussed the first film, here's where the comparison really starts happening. Once you have talked about how a theme is portrayed by a set of actors in one version of the play, then you really can start the comparison part and describe the significance of the difference and how that difference matters to the way the theme comes across. Does it hurt that theme? Does it neglect that theme? Does it emphasize the theme? And why would a director make that choice? Remember, directors are like uh, literary analysts, literary critics. They are making choices based on what they find valuable about the play. Um, and then you'll have your standard um, conclusion um, that you know from English 101. And by the way, all of the things you learned in English 101 apply to this assignment and every assignment you have from here on out in every English class. Um, so review your handouts that show you how to incorporate quotations correctly. Make sure you're using signal phrases. Um, it seems more and more common for me to see dropped quotes, which are quotations that are not introduced or connected in any way to, to a speaker um, or a writer. If you're quoting your secondary source, the expert on Shakespeare, you will reference that person by full name or last name only, never just first name. You don't know that person personally, so it's last name only. And it's like William Shakespeare. No one ever says William writes. People will say Shakespeare writes or Einstein writes. So it is appropriate, most appropriate in academic writing to reference a person, an expert, by their last name only as you introduce something they have written. Now, for characters, that's a different story. If you're writing about Ophelia, you will call her Ophelia. You don't even know her last name. So uh, characters, fictional characters, can be referenced by first name. That's the exception there. Make sure, again, uh, that you know how to use signal phrases appropriately, when a signal phrase needs to be followed by a comma, or if you're using the word that, remember that and a comma do the same job. So don't put a comma after that before a quotation. If you want to use longer quotations, more than four lines of prose, prose is uh, what's anything that's written that is not poetry, and we have both prose and verse or poetry in Shakespeare. So within the play, Hamlet, there will be some lines that are prose and some that are poetry. And the way to notice the difference quickly is to look at how the, the writing is shaped. Does the writing go from the left to the right of the page and take up the full line 
each consecutive line or and this is for one speaker so it'll be verse if it's one speaker uh, like the soliloquies of Hamlet are often in verse so look and see if it's something that needs to be formatted as a poem or as a work of prose just prose you may also have some dialogue and I have posted for you um, how to incorporate dialogue within your essay. Here is the part about quoting Hamlet. Please print this or keep it uh, open in a tab on your computer as you are writing your essay so that you know how to correctly uh, introduce and quote and format those quotations and notice the in-text citation. This in-text citation is telling readers that the quotation comes from Act 3, Scene 2, Lines 130, 138 through 140. And that's how you uh, put exactly what act, scene, and line numbers you are quoting. You're going to have to count some line numbers. I think your line numbers are numbered every 10 lines or so. So uh, make sure you count those and get those written in there accurately. All right, let me know if you have questions.